Hey, up. Here in the UK, we live in a strange sort of contradictory smoke and mirrors sort of world. Uh, I suspect it's the same in other countries as well, where the things that politicians and campaigners tell us aren't really true. We're sort of routinely deceived. I suppose a lot of people don't realise it, but those of us that do realise it just accept it as the norm. Constantly beating motorists over the heads for the selfishness and constantly blaming the rise in ownership of personal motorised transport as the reason for our ever-increasing congestion on the roads, which is only partly true. Now, I watch a lot of um, old documentaries here on YouTube, um, sort of based in Britain, centering around city centres and, you know, the advances in motoring. And congestion was a concern back in the 1950s, as, lo as well as, you know, pollution, air pollution, that kind of thing. Now, back in those days, the government was just a little bit more sensible than it is today, and they embarked on a programme of road building, bypass building, widening roads, easing congestions wherever they could to help with the ever-increasing um, number of motor vehicles on the road. Now, it didn't solve it, but it mitigated it to some extent and, um, you know, made everyone's life a little bit easier than it might have been. It also helped to alleviate air pollution because, you know, you had fewer vehicles standing still in traffic queues. You if you take a single lane carriageway and turn it into a two lane carriageway, you can get twice the amount of traffic down it. So traffic moved better. Pollution was reduced. And then, I'm not quite sure when it was, maybe about 30 years ago, this brilliant idea of putting bus lanes in cropped up. And the beginning of what I've always considered to be a failed experiment started. The bright idea was that there would take two lane carriageways like the one that you can see me riding down here now and they would close one half of it off to normal traffic reserving it only for you know the five or six buses an hour that had to take that route now i remember the news reports at the time in the papers and on tv telling us that the reasons for this were to reduce traffic you see politicians thought that the decline in the use of buses was down to the long travelling times. I'll get onto that in a moment. So if they put bus lanes in, it would make travel time for buses shorter. The bus companies would be able to lay on more services because of, you know, those few minutes per journey that were saving. Actually, they didn't. Certainly not in my neck of the woods anyway. The increase in congestion that this would cause would understandably annoy car and motorcycle drivers so they would then revert to using the bus because it was more convenient again that never happened it continued to increase but what did happen is that all around towns and city centers in the uk you have these ribbons of desert tarmac that is rarely used by anyone apart from the occasional cyclists and the odd bus they are in effect a complete waste of tarmac, a complete waste of traffic resources that in real terms serve no purpose other than to increase congestion, to increase the cost of transporting goods and people, and to increase environmental damage in the way of air pollution. Like I said earlier on, it was one huge failure of an experiment. It never had the desired effect, far from bus traffic increasing, it's continued to diminish. And far from tackling pollution and congestion, that's continued to increase as a result of the existence of bus lanes. And coincidentally, I'm a great believer that it was bus lanes that led to, uh, you know, the first Euro emissions regulations. Back in the early 1990s, our politicians were telling us that we would have run out of oil by the year 2000. Which again was another lie, that never happened. So fuel consumption on cars had to be cut, necessitating the use of fuel injection systems rather than the old-fashioned carburettor. And of course that's when we saw the 
introduction of the catalytic converter to cut down on the amount of pollution that vehicles were causing. I personally don't think it was a coincidence. Okay, it may have happened eventually anyway, but I do believe that the advent of bus lanes was partly what sparked all that off. Now, I know all towns and cities are different. Uh, London, for example, that festering pimple on the arse of Britain. Maybe bus lanes are necessary there, but the UK isn't all like London. In fact, only London is like London. The rest of the country is quite different. And what I would like to say is, as you watch this clip, watch what happens when we suddenly hit the, um, the area where the bus lanes are. I've just entered the start of it here and count up how many buses and cyclists you see using that little ribbon of deserted road during the course of this video. The sequence was filmed in, you know, the morning of a normal working day. I can't remember what day, but it was a normal working day. And I should point out that the clock on the bike hadn't been set. I think it was about an hour or an hour and a half fast. Now, as you see, as we're about two miles from the city centre here, as you hit the bus lanes, all the traffic is suddenly funnelled from two lanes into one lane and it slows down considerably. And the closer you get to the whole city centre, the slower the traffic moves. Increasing journey times, using more fuel and creating more pollution. And I don't think we've seen a single bus or cyclist yet. Now, just for clarification, motorcycles in Hull are allowed to use most of the bus lanes as are taxis and pedal cyclists. But I don't use them habitually, I only use them when I consider that it's necessary to make sort of better progress on my journey. The reason being that it does present some sort of quite unique dangers to a motorcyclist. Uh, I have thought of perhaps putting a video out about that if you would like to see it. Let me know in the comments section and if there's enough interest I'll cobble a video together. Now the main reason for putting bus lanes in was um, pressure from certain groups, namely bus fleet owners who were seeing their businesses dying a slow death as the demand for bus travel diminished and environmentalists who wanted you know even 30 years ago the wanted motorists out of the cars and into buses or walking or you know using a pedal cycle they believed that this sort of carrot and stick approach of making life difficult for the motorist would make us all get into buses and it would help save the environment and of course it didn't work because buses, politicians and environmental campaigners all have one thing in common. The dinosaurs, they're not in touch with reality. Well, certainly where campaigners and politicians are concerned. It's clear from the things that they say that they still believe that, um, you know, your common working man lives in a factory town where, you know, he gets out of bed, walks out of his front door and it's just a 10 minute walk to the factory gates where he works. Well, England isn't like that anymore. Politicians have seen to that. They've changed the structure of Britain so that manufacturing is no longer viable. So there are no factories, there are no mills. We receive an education which equips us with certain life skills and qualifications. And we go to a place of employment where those skills and qualifications will serve us best. And by and large, that involves travelling quite a distance for some people just to get to the place of the work so they can keep the roof over the heads and food on the table. Local jobs that meet our needs simply don't exist anymore. And that in turn has had an effect on bus services. Now, the heyday, the peak, if you like, of bus travel was reached in the 1950s. And by the 1970s, it was in freefall for the reasons that I've just given you. The problem with buses is they don't take you directly to the destination that you need to be at. Just going back to my younger days at uni, I lived in one of the East Coast villages. Now, it was 10 miles away from the terminus in Withensea. And by the time the bus got to me, generally speaking, it had zero passengers on it. I was the first person to get on. Now, depending on the traffic, it would take anything from 40 to 50 minutes for me to reach Hull at the bus station, but that wasn't the end of my journey. To, cause to be able to get to uni, I then had to get onto another bus, which usually involved 
a 20 minute to half hour wait followed by another 25 to 40 minute bus journey to get to my final destination so it could take anything up to two hours for me to get there and sometimes considerably longer for me to get home in the evening now those were the days when I got my first motorcycle and it was a revelation for me because what was normally two hours travelling time to get there in the morning changed to about half an hour, 35 minutes total. So my total travelling time per day to get there and back changed from four plus hours to just over an hour. And if I was to make that journey today by bus, you know, some 40 years later, it would be exactly the same, you know, give or take 10 minutes. Now, don't get me wrong, there will always be a need for buses, but they will never get back to the level that they were at between, say, the 1920s and the 1960s. Civilization has moved on, and it's time that people accepted that. Now, going back to the environmentalists that championed the advent of bus lanes, it hasn't worked, but they've simply swept that under the carpet. And they're now pushing other, more draconian measures to get us motorists off the road. When in fact, it is them, the environmentalists, the politicians and the bus companies who have all conspired to drive up environmental emissions from traffic. They are responsible in no small way to the current level of pollution in our atmosphere. End of story, there's no disputing that. And we need to stop putting up with this hypocrisy and sleight of hand. Just cast your mind back to the pandemic and the lockdowns. Uh, now, it certainly happened where I live, and I know that other viewers reported this in the comments section on various videos as well. We all came out of the darkness at the end of the lockdowns to find that huge swathes of road once again had been closed off entire lanes. This time, not for bus lanes, but for cycle lanes. There's a section of road called Freetown Way in Hull that connects uh, Ferrens Way to Drypool, about mm, maybe half a mile long. It was a dual carriageway put in at the end of the 90s to ease congestion in the city centre. And it worked really well, only at the end of the lockdowns, once again, this dual carriageway road had had a complete lane on either side closed off for the use of pedal cycles. Not buses, pedal cycles. And that happened all over Hull on huge lengths of main arterial roads. Entire lanes now reserved for the use of non-existent pedal cycles cordoned off with those sort of bendy bollard things. And as a result, Freetown Way, which was basically built as a bypass around the whole city centre that was once a relatively free-flowing piece of road is now gridlocked at pretty much any time of the day and in what the three or four years since uh, they made these changes I've yet to see a pedal cycle using those oh so important cycle lanes now our local politicians the whole city council told us that this was for our well-being it was to encourage people to cycle which hasn't happened which would in turn cut down congestion, which hasn't happened, and that in turn would cut down on air pollution, which has increased. Now, generally speaking, the way I've always interpreted it is that you run an experiment, and if it fails, you scrap it, you go back to the drawing board, and you start again with something else. But our governments and local councils haven't done that. I mean, Bearing in mind that maybe it was a long-term project, by 10 years it was obvious that bus lanes were not having the effect that they wanted them to have. And it's now been 30 years or more. They should have gone a long time ago. I mean, I live on a main bus route and, you know, when I moved into my current house in 1998, the buses travelling towards Hull during peak time, during rush hour, were at best about a third full. And now, 24, 25 years later, those buses are virtually empty. Huge diesel engines in vehicles capable of carrying, I don't know, 40 or 50 people 
carrying about the same amount of passengers that you could comfortably fit in an average family car. That's not environmentally friendly. And these ridiculous cycle lanes that we're now having to put up with are causing environmental devastation. Exactly the opposite of what we were told they were going to do in both cases. So, this is just my opinion, but I put it to you. The environmentalists and politicians have themselves collectively caused more environmental destruction to this country than would have happened if they'd just left well alone. They've got to shoulder responsibility for much of what is perceived to be going on on this planet at the moment. Rather than pointing the finger at the driver and forcing him and her into electric vehicles, which we all know have their own unique set of drawbacks and environmental issues, they should instead be looking to undo a lot of the damage that they themselves have done. That would be the best starting point. Now, I know it does vary here and there, but generally speaking, bus lanes are in operation between 7am and 7pm. We have cameras everywhere now, so any unwitting motorist that strays into one of those lanes during that time usually ends up with a fan coming through the door. And those operating times for those bus lanes have been set in stone since the day those bus lanes were first installed. Simply not necessary. You know, maybe between 7am and 9am there may be a use for them. And then again between 4pm and 6pm they may be useful, but at all other times, those lanes should be free for normal traffic to use them. That would alleviate a lot of problems that we have currently in one fell swoop. It would speed up commerce, helping the economy. It would speed up the commute to work, saving the average commuter from wasting fuel and money. And it would take a huge strain off the environment. Why aren't environmental experts highlighting this? Why aren't environmental campaigners campaigning to get some changes made? What gives? Why are they ignoring the glaringly obvious? Why instead are they just focusing on other ways to make our lives more difficult and more expensive? Could it be that they simply don't want to draw attention to what they've done? Now, for the most part, uh, local councils in the UK are able to set where bus lanes exist and where they're done. They're also able to set what vehicles are allowed to use them and at what times. As I've already said um, earlier on in this video, in Hull, motorcycles are allowed to use the bus lanes. But that doesn't apply around the entire country. I think there's something like 500, well between 500 and 600 miles of bus lanes in the UK currently. I've got no idea how many um, normal traffic routes have now been turned over for use by cyclists. Now, that doesn't sound like an awful lot in a country that, you know, probably has tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, maybe, of road networks. But, that small amount of mileage constitutes the heaviest populated areas of the country. The areas where most of the traffic is. So, environmentally and cost-wise, re-evaluating those roads would make a huge difference to the economy and to the environment. And I think it's safe to say that our government, central government, is aware of this because uh, towards the beginning of this month, January, they did, did issue uh, a directive or initiative politely asking city councils and local councils to re-evaluate these measures and perhaps allow motorcyclists to use these lanes where normally they can. And I believe there was also a prompt for them to look at the times that bus lanes are operating. But it's not a mandate, it is just an initiative which these councils can ignore and probably will if they can. So, as much as I think it's a step in the right direction, it needs to be much more robust. It needs to be a mandate. Directing councils to get these silly measures out of the way and get traffic moving. So, for the last 20 minutes you've been watching me traversing the main routes in and around the whole city centre. Hopefully you've been paying attention. Let me know how many buses you've seen. 
And also let me know how many cyclists you've seen using the cycle lanes. Um, don't count the ones crossing on the pedestrian crossing that were using the pavement. Which is supposed to be for pedestrians. Let me know what you think about my take on bus lanes and cycle lanes. I would be really interested to know. Once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and my other videos and in doing so helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. You could support me further by leaving a like on this video and subscribing to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. And if you would like to help this channel out in other ways, uh, you can do that through my Patreon page or through the Super Thanks button down below. I am of course going to be back on Friday, so until then, please ride safely and I'll see you soon.